Uh, guys, we have a situation here at the KSC. Uh, this is mutiny, okay? Jeb and Valentina have snuck out in the middle of the night and uh, they have decided that they would like to go to space whether Command uh, says it's okay or not. You see, they have been, they are sick of being cooped up all the time. In the simulator, they want to see the real thing. They're sick of it. And I've, I've had Bob and Bill working all night, late hours, testing, making sure all this stuff is okay for manned space flight. We don't want to get too rash here. We don't want to go all crazy now. We want to make sure everything is perfectly safe. But Jeb does not, uh, does not agree with that game plan. He would like to go to space right now. And so, um, yeah, they've decided to take off on an unsanctioned space flight in this test rocket where we are testing the lithobrake uh, command module, which holds four Kerbals. It has now Jebediah, Bill, Bob, and Valentina, who are having a blast. At least Valentina and Jeb are having a blast. The other two uh, were just testing things. They did not know we would be launching now. This is mutiny, guys. They have stolen this rocket, and they've blasted themselves off into space. They wanted to see it for themselves. Hey guys, it's Charlie. Welcome back to Conquering Kerbal Space Program. Uh, this is episode 20, and um, you guys don't know what that means, but for me, it means that uh, I am no longer way ahead in terms of playing and having the videos ready to put on YouTube. So uh, as of this video, I'm pretty much uploading whenever I'm able to play. And so I just wanted to forewarn that does mean that videos will come less frequently than they have been. Um, currently, I'm averaging more than one video per day. So I don't think that should annoy anyone, uh, anyone who's watching the series anyway. By the way, you guys who are watching the series and are interacting with it and commenting every video, you guys are awesome. Thank you so much. It's so cool to, to interact and talk with you guys. So cool. A um, couple of things happened before, and before I get into this, I'm actually going to talk about this in orbit when I'm launching a craft. But uh, I have something I want to show you guys. I have something uh, we're going to do this episode. And in order to do it, I actually need to upgrade my launch pad. Yeah, the craft I want to launch right now is over 140 tons. And it's actually taller than, uh, well, it's taller than the requirements that are here, or taller than the, the maximums here. So we're going to have to upgrade our launch pad. Let me show you what I'm working on. This is the Mohu Probe version 2. Uh, I know you haven't seen version 1. It's a slightly smaller version of this. Version 2 uh, was created because version 1 did not have enough Delta V to do it. This is the Mohu probe. This whole thing is for a probe to go to Mohu and not come back. That's not designed to come back anyway. Um, it is designed to hopefully get captured and orbit Mohu and get some science and things like that. Uh, take a look at the payload inside the base. So we've got a uh, reserve battery, and I know this stuff doesn't quite look like it's, you know, it's kind of jumbled all over the place. Like, why is all this stuff on the sides? Well, I know it doesn't quite look it, but it is perfectly balanced. It took a little bit of time to figure this out and where to position things. It's perfectly balanced. Um, there's actually a light here too, so I do have one light on the satellite. I've thought about adding more lights, and I may add a couple of little ones in symmetry just to give it more character or whatever, but that one light is the only reason that it's, in, that it's balanced. The whole thing was a little off, but anyway, this probe has a huge gas tank as opposed to the little ones that we've had before. Uh, and it, this entire gas tank, the whole thing, is going to basically be the thing that burns to get captured by Mohu. Um, it takes like, I don't know, between 3,000 and 3,500 uh, uh, Delta V to just get, like, to slow down fat, to slow down enough to get captured by Mohu. That's what I'm trying to say. Um, so that's what this whole tank is for. So when we do get captured, once we do get in orbit, I probably won't have anything left to adjust our incline anywhere. Um, I am hoping for a polar orbit if possible, but I don't have one of the scanners on this. And I thought about putting the scanner on it, and then I thought, you know what, this is a science satellite. That's what this is going to be for. Uh, there are a couple of dishes here, and those are going to be for communicating as long as we can with other bodies uh, with Kerbin. But eventually we're going to lose a signal, and the only thing that we'll be able to communicate is this big dish here. 
Now you can use the Communitron 88-88 uh, to do this. It has a range of 20 gigameters and Mohu at its furthest distance away Mohu is 19.9 gigameters. So um, 18 at the 8888 will work really well. Unfortunately, for whatever reason, I'm actually able to get the reflector on KR14 before the 8888. Um, I'm not sure why the Reflectron KR14 has a 60 gigameter range. It's a much bigger range. I think it probably has something to do with the 8888 being so compact and being a foldable uh, thing. So that's probably why the tech is a little more advanced. But anyway, this probe is meant for interplanetary travel and I want to launch it right now. So let's do that. Okay, so we're here on the launch pad and this video and the next few after it are going to be one of the few times, uh, well maybe, maybe it's gonna become more of a common thing, I don't know, but uh, I'm not able to actually record my voice while I'm playing, it's just in a situation with my, with people in my house and everything, it's just too loud, so I'm actually recording this after launching it. And uh, this rocket is pretty cool, it's pretty huge. I can actually turn it to the right uh, quicker, I can turn it uh, eastward uh, faster than uh, normal, or at least faster than I should be able to, uh, just because of the way it's designed, the solid rocket boosters, and uh, they have gimbling. It's a very, very stable rocket until you get rid of the boosters. Um, and you have to sort of time it just right to where the boosters will separate out, and then you hit the throttle on the other rockets and boost yourself up. Um, so there's a little bit of a skill, there's a little bit of a timing to it, but um, for the most part, it's a fairly easy rocket to launch and it has way, way more Delta V than is ever needed. Uh, but my hope is that by the time I get to orbit, by the time I get to where I need to be uh, orbiting Kerbin, that I will have enough Delta V to hopefully succeed in the mission to bring this to Mohu. This rocket doesn't actually have large engines on it. Um, I have not unlocked uh, bigger engines in my tech tree yet, but I, I went ahead and I tested, you saw previously with Je Jebediah and, uh, and Valentina and stuff stealing the rocket, you saw this sort of four-way uh, smaller rocket configuration here with the quad adapter. Uh, and this is providing a, a lot of power with really good ISP actually. These, these are the KW Wildcats, they have a 320 ISP in a vacuum, but they each provide 230 kilonewtons of thrust so I'm actually able to get almost a thousand kilonewtons of thrust with this rocket um, but still have decent ISP uh, our specific impulse which is also um, known basically as sort of a way of seeing the fuel efficiency of a motor or a, of an engine motor um, and so that's what this this rocket has on it that's also the next stage after this um, the, the lower stage the one that's burning now actually has the uh, little short range uh, atmospheric flight antenna on it. So um, I've done it a couple of times here. I've launched this where uh, when I could actually speak at, at the same time of launching, um, I've done it to where I've actually un or decoupled that lower stage before activating my antenna. And I always just, I just always do that by impulse. Um, so this, this launch here, I did it right, but uh, usually I would, I would do it the other way. I also have not yet implemented any action groups in my rockets. I probably should be doing that so that I don't have to hunt and peck, uh, at least for the little components that I want to launch. I can just set it to a hotkey on my keyboard and away it goes. So I could say, for example, extend the antenna uh, with a simple key instead of having to rotate around the craft with a camera and look for that little a tiny antenna to right click it and hit activate. Um, so that's a little bit of a burden, but so yeah, we're just gonna go ahead and circularize our burn right now. And um, when we're done with that, we'll have uh, an okay orbit. It's not too big. I think it ends up being about 85 and a half K on the Apo apps and about 79 K or so on the Perry apps. Not a huge amount of eccentricity there. It's pretty good. Uh, and then we're gonna time warp over to the light side of the planet so I can give you a quick tour of this thing uh, while it's in space. I know I just kind of gave you one in the VAB already, but it's a little different when you can see it in space. 
So uh, one of the things you may not have noticed about this craft is that it has a ton of different science experiments on it. Um, and the, the reason is basically because it's, I don't know where it's going to go, so I just packed a bunch of expensive stuff. Uh, there are four science juniors in these little universal storage little pods here, which is probably one of the reasons why this rocket is so expensive. If you notice the price when we launched it, it was about 120 something thousand. Uh, it, easily the most expensive craft we've launched to date. Um, there's also uh, three mystery goo canisters, uh, mag magnetometer, um, you know, all every experiment we have. And one of the reasons why I wanted to, I was sort of driven by this, you can see Kerbal Alarm Clock here is showing a transfer window is available in just seven days. Um, and I noticed that in Kerbal Alarm Clock and I kind of went, seven days, that seems pretty quick. So I thought, can we reach Mohu without nuclear engines? Like, am I able to actually get this without nuclear propulsion? That would be kind of nuts. And so I sort of devised this rocket configuration here to try and get to Mohu and get captured by Mohu before I have nuclear propulsion, which I think is a pretty difficult thing to do. Um, and one of the things I think that's gonna make this a little bit more difficult, uh, by the way, you can tell it's really long, like this craft is super long. Um, but one of the things that's gonna make it difficult is what I'm circling there, and that's liquid fuel and oxidizer. It's a little low. Um, I did put one of these CCR2 ports, uh, the same ports we put on our life support satellites. I did put two of those on this bottom tank in the event that I thought maybe I could come up and do a refueling mission to uh, put some more fuel into the satellite. And um, I think that's what we're gonna do. We're gonna put a refueling, we're gonna do a refueling mission uh, where we bring fuel up to this satellite. We're not gonna have docking ports, but it's almost the same as docking. Actually, it's a little more difficult than docking because I have to get really close to this thing, essentially park right next to it, and then EVA, uh, an engineer uh, out there to hook up a hose to siphon off some fuel from the vessel that I launch up there with and put fuel into this one. So that one, that, that mission will be fun. We'll probably do that just so that I have more Delta V for this rocket before I send it out because right now it has under 6,000 Delta V. I would like it to have more than 6,000 Delta V if it's gonna do what I want it to do. So, uh, so basically this is all I have for this video today. Um, I gotta go back to work here. So uh, I, I, it's probably gonna be slower uploads going into the, the coming weeks. I have a product I've been developing for some time that I really need to get done. Uh, it needs to it needs to be finalized. So uh, it's a it's a training series that has to do with what I do for a living. So um, and this this it's the second half of what my YouTube channel is dedicated to. So anyway, thanks for watching. Uh, another video will be coming up shortly. Probably I have already kind of got an idea of what I want to do. Oh, I'll, we're gonna have to finalize our moon network, uh, obviously. So I'm gonna do that next episode. So. Thanks for watching. Bye.